<laughs> Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas, because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey, everybody, happy Wednesday, and what a Wooly Wednesday. It has it been has. hot. <laughs> Busy day in the shop, hot outside, warm and cheerful in here. <laughs> We've had lots of guests today, including a special guest that we're going to let say hi in just a few minutes. But what have you guys have been really busy, so what have you been doing? Visiting with people that came into the shop today. Chitty chat chatting. Rolling and stocking MC1. <laughs> We have been so busy and you guys have just been making it so much fun for us. So we really do have a fun show for you here today. I'm going to say hi to a few people and we're going to get started. Thanks for being here everybody. Hi everyone, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome to Wooly Wednesday. This is what we like to do on Wednesdays is hang out with our BFFs around the world. So you should see people checking in saying hi and where they're from. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay, we welcome you to do that. And if you're watching on YouTube, hey, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see all the videos we have as they come out. We meet every Wednesday with our friends for a live hangout. There's Q&A, there's show and tells, there's demonstrations. And now we're doing a lot more felt alongs and we post those to our YouTube channel after. All of it goes to our YouTube channel. So I hope you'll subscribe. And if you're here in the live feed, I'm gonna say hi to a few people right now. Who are some folks that are with us, Anne? We have got Judy in Tennessee and Sherry from Shreveport. <laughs> Laura from Massachusetts. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to cue you all up. I see Linda Reeder here. I see Becky also. I see Dale, Luann Mack, Kelly Hoople, Sonia's there, Maria Cohen. Of course, a bunch of our usual suspects. Thank you for being here, everybody. And um, we have some fun things to show and share with you today. I know a lot of you have already jumped on the fairy tale pumpkin bandwagon. Uh, we're going to sell out, but the girls are kind of like watching the sales. Cl you're closed. We did. We're yeah. sold out okay <laughs> okay so some of you know just about an hour ago I posted the art bat fairy tale pumpkin we have sold out production is rolling for the next round so if you didn't make it in don't worry we're gonna make more right away but it does take a couple of days uh, to get a bundle yeah made <laughs> so congratulations everybody who got in there who was the first person do you remember Terry Ryan okay Terry Ryan bought the first bundle of fairy tale pumpkin so yay Terry <laughs> And some other people that did not surprise us, for sure. <laughs> I see Maria is in Sweden from joined us. Diane Hoskins, hi, sweetheart. It's nice to see you. And Juliet from Alaska, that is so awesome. We thank you all for being here. Hey, so um, to help kick it off today, Hannah is going to show you something and do a little shout out. Yay, Hannah! Hey, y'all. Um, how are y'all doing? So I wanted to start off by giving a big shout out to Joyce Gillespie. I know you'll be watching us tomorrow on YouTube, hopefully, so I just wanted to say hi. Y'all, Joyce is 89 years old and she's just learning how to felt. She's actually gonna, gonna needle felt her Christmas cards this year, so I just thought that was too cool and I had to share it. So big shout out to Joyce and we love you and thank you for being a part of our community. Alrighty, and I'm going to show y'all the Emerald Forest Bundle. So this is one of our specialty designer bundles. It's going to come with quite a few different fibers. To start underneath here, oops, let's grab that before I drop it. Underneath here we've got three colors of the MC1, if you can see them. We have sage, lemongrass, and true olive in our MC1. And then for our luster fibers, we have leaf in our Tussa silk, pine in our bamboo, we have olive in our sari silk waist, we have a kiwi hanky, a couple different colors of neps, we have mushroom and cocoa. Um, in our merino silk blends, we have Pueblo as well as Loch Ness. And then we have about five merino top colors. We're going to have evergreen, coffee bean, olive, sage, and fur. 
So that is our emerald forest. Super fun wet felting scarves or wet felting a 2D picture with a lot of texture, which I know has been big. So there's that. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Cool. That is awesome. And hey, we had Hannah bring that out because of a felt along that we're going to be doing uh, in just a few weeks from now. And I wanted her to show one of the specialty designer bundles. Plus, we kind of have this green theme thing happening today. So I wanted her to share that with you all. It's called a specialty designer pack. I think Ann posted a link to it already. And it's just a great eclectic mix to give you an opportunity to try different fibers together for creating texture in your wet felt and we'll talk a little bit more about wet felting texture in a minute. So hey y'all we have a special guest in the studio today. I'm so excited for you to meet one of our, our, ours and your BFFs and come on up here Anna. So we have Anna Redke with us here today. So everyone just a big round of hearts for Anna. I'm going to say hard. <laughs> this is Anna Winston Repke, uh, and you came from Illinois. I did, all the way. And y'all might remember that just this last week, she posted this amazing sunset picture with the sun behind all of those black trees. Just incredible. So say hi to everybody, Thank Anna. You. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> so Anna, you brought in a purse. Now yes, this is an example. Let's hold it up so everyone can see. This is one of her handbags. And tell us a little, just a little bit about it. Um, hmm. It's wet felted. I did a big long strip, cut it down, you know, so that it was all even without the crazy sides. And um, it's one big round piece, sewed on the side, and then sewed at the bottom, the square mm -hmm. at the bottom. Now you're and not the doing handles that. and the reinforcement. It's lovely too. <laughs> Big old bag. You can put all yes, kinds of stuff in yes, it. Yes, it's my travel on the airplane bag. Oh, and you did some top stitching on there too. I did, yeah. yes. That's my new love. Mm -hmm. Oh, the top yeah, stitching. Yeah, the top stitching with the sew machine. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing more wall hangings now yes. than purses and yes. stuff. I started mm -hmm. out making purses and then I, um, someone said I'm going to hang it on the wall and and went, oh, well, I'm going to do pictures because they're easier. I don't like making purses. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But now I got people <laughs> wanting purses. So. <laughs> so I'm doing purses too. Or big bags. Big bags. Big toes. Yeah. So we hope we get to visit with her again because her daughter just mm -hmm. moved to San Antonio. So like an hour. You drove yes. an hour to come see us. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> All great Texas roads. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll mm -hmm. be back. Very cool. Well, thank you for coming in today. Thank you. My <laughs> pleasure. So excited to be here. <laughs> cool. So big round of hearts for Anna. Super fun. Okay, y'all. And um, isn't that fun? Doesn't she have a great bag? You know, so Anna and I learned that what we have in common is both of us, our husbands are named Rodney, and she also has rat terriers. <laughs> and what's different is she has 10 children, <laughs> and I have none. <laughs> So we decided she had all the kids. Your <laughs> yeah, she she took care of all my kids for me. <laughs> Big stream of hearts for you, Anna. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So now we have Kayla up with a special announcement for you. So yay, Kayla! Yay. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm showing off our new colors we've got here for our MC1 monochrome pack. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got cotton white here. Uh, we've got our black onyx, our charcoal, and then our two new colors right here, which are slate and coal. And then also the storm gray is still in here too. So if you wanna get some of our new colors here, um, when you're ordering the MC1 monochrome pack, just go ahead and write hashtag um, shades of gray here in the comment section and we'll put those new colors in there for you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Kayla. <laughs> Thank you. So we wanted her to show that we do, we have made a special round of the MC1 monochromes pack that include two of the new shades of gray. We're not shipping it automatically because it's not quite in the rotation. So if you order the MC1 monochrome pack, and Anne's gonna post a link to that. You did already? She, she did already. 
just put hashtag shades of gray in the comments and we'll pick this one instead of the one that's photographed. So cool. Cherie says that's her favorite <laughs> and pound shades of gray. <laughs> Very good. Good, good, good. Awesome. So I see some people here. Pam says she's missed the last three weeks and she's glad to be back. Um, Lois says, would you please create a blue special pack? What is that? A blue specialty designer, Lois? Let us know what, what you're wanting because we have two specialty designers with blue in them uh, and we can show those for you too. And we also have an MC1 pack. <laughs> Kaylin says shades of gray sounds naughty. <laughs> Does it? Oh, is this? It's a bad book. Oh, I'm see. I'm so. <laughs> I'm so naive. I don't know what's out in popular culture. So if it sounds a little risque, okay. So what? <laughs> you know, what, Hannah forgot to mention uh, that we took this out. But the specialty designer packs come with a little Angelina bling, and then we contain it in this packaging so it doesn't spread throughout. So just so you know, that's in there too. Cool, people are laughing now. Yeah, I'm clueless about this stuff, for sure. <laughs> okay, cool. So we have this fun kind of green thing happening today. And you know what? We're gonna have time for wild cards today. So we want you, this is always an interactive hour. You can ask questions, you can ask to see something in the shop, you can ask how to something or try and get some of your technical questions answered. And now is the perfect time to do that. If you ask a question, if you contribute to the conversation, your name goes into our little bowl and we draw prizes at the end. So that's always a fun thing. And if we don't answer your question, you're welcome to email us at customer service at Living Felt. You're welcome to use the CRM on our website at livingfelt.com and you can call us. We're here Monday through Saturday uh, from nine to four, Saturdays 10 to four. We'll be glad to answer your questions. So you'll always get a 100% response rate if you email us, if you use our website, or if you give us a call. we will be glad to help you. What's happening over there, Anne? Nothing to says, I'm green, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, kind of a green thing happening today. And Cindy asks, when will part five of the doll tutorial be out? Oh, so, so Cindy, um, the doll tutorial part five happens this Friday. So this Friday at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock? 12.30. I'm getting my live times mixed up. So this Friday at 12.30 from my home studio, we will finish the doll tutorial and we'll be wet felting the clothes. And I brought in Santa. He's a skinny Santa. Uh, to share with you all so you could see him in his current state and this is the doll that I've been felting along with you He's got a big head and a skinny body and little feet um, That this is his current state. My husband said he should be like a tattooed Santa <laughs> um, And so he needs some props and stuff and I don't know what else I'll do for him But this is his current state and then this Friday, I'm gonna show you some techniques for patterning and wet felting clothes, and I'll be working on Mrs. Claus. She's a little behind uh, schedule, but I'll be wet felting some stuff for her in preparation. Um, so I'm looking for some questions. Someone says they'll need a reveal at the end. Uh, for the dolls, a reveal, uh, no, something else. What's happening, Ann? <laughs> um, let's see, Deborah asks, what is our uh, next felt along project? Oh, and that's Debbie who? Uh, Deborah Bearden. Hi, Deborah. So our next felt along project is going to be cobweb scarves. So I think we need to wet felt. This has been a long series of needle felting. We're going to wet felt, and so we can talk about that a little bit this week. And um, that that should be the plan is to do a cobweb scarf so i brought in a couple of things actually someone today our winner from last week posted her cobweb scarf in the group today and shared it and she actually chose the emerald forest theme the woodland theme ah. mm -hmm. so this is a this is a nano felt scarf kit but you get an idea these are what we do in the scarf kits is we include a nice merino silk blend Complement, complementary colors in wool and some kind of shiny. So it could be bamboo, it could be tassa silk, um, and then it could be viscose now, and then some sari silk waste. So 
For that felt along, we're gonna make a cobweb scarf. And the idea is to give you a project, if you're new to wet felting, something that's very simple, I swear, anyone can do it, and it would make great gifts. If you're going to fiber festivals, if you're gonna be shelling at craft shows, if you just wanna make gifts for friends and family. This is an example of the kind that I make. Let me turn it right side out. This is made with um, spice and I like to put like big holes in it that are a little more decorative or you could just make it thin and I'm going to show you how to do this even if you're just brand brand new to wet felting. So it's super easy to do. Here's this one y'all have seen a couple of times in mango and I'm just trying to decide I'm going to make one more sample before we do it together maybe in the blues because I, I don't work in blues very often. So maybe try and do that. So well, are y'all interested in doing that? Making a cobweb scarf? Let me just see a round of hearts if that interests you. Oh yes. To we do that together. Interested. We've had a couple of people ask when we'll be posting supplies lists for it. Oh okay. <laughs> so for the supplies list, I'm so glad y'all want to do that. You know what, um, Anne, would you grab the uh, bundle for me? We're going to just talk about some of the basic supplies you might consider for a wet felting and really it can be very very simple. You can do something like just grab one of our kits and that would just be, uh, we have a cobweb scarf kit. It looks like this. Yes, it's gonna include printed instructions, but for those of you who feel still a little intimidated to just take that step by yourself, I'll do it with you. It's so easy and so fun. And this is an example of what you'll get in the kit and I'll tell you exactly how to use it and exactly how I felt. So what I would recommend you having is just the most basic of supplies. If you have nothing else, you need a six foot table. And trust me, a six foot table will do this project. You'll need about an ounce and a half or two ounces of your main fiber. And the reason I like using the Merino silk blends is because they have so much richness in them all by themselves. They have variegated Merino top and they also have um, silk running through them. In some cases that silk is dyed and in some cases it's white, but it adds so much interest uh, to your project with very little effort. And I'll show you one or two as an example. So this is one made with the sunset. And this is what the Sunset um, Merino Silk Blend looks like. And I'll unfurl it just so you can see how, I know it doesn't quite fit with our other colors, but you can see like how beautiful that variegation is and how wonderful, you know, the striations look through it. Um, so these will really lend to just instant success, especially on this scarf project. Um, so you'll need that. You'll need your main color, maybe some accents. If you have locks, bring those in or some other texture fibers. And then at minimum, beside your six foot table, towels, soap. You know, I like to use olive oil soap. Uh, and I'm going to show you a few things here. Thank you, Anne. Uh, ball brass or a bottle or a sponge. I like to wet out with the sponge just as much as a ball brass. Um, you'll want some mesh or some kind of barrier to keep your hands away from the fiber. And at least bubble wrap. You could use our super bubble, um, which I love as a work surface, or you could just use bubble wrap. And if you don't have that, then get that grippy shelf liner. Um, and it should be as long as your, as long as your project. And by grippy shelf liner, I mean, let me show you, this stuff. Y'all see me set my workstation up with it all the time? Get the thicker stuff. So either our super bubble or bubble wrap, both of which we have in the shop, or some grippy shelf liner, which we do not have in the shop. And that's all you need. I will post a list and I'll post the date. It's either going to be the last Friday in August or the first Friday in September, which might be more likely, the first Friday in September. And Fraser asks, if you don't have a table that big, can you do it on the floor? Yeah, Fraser, if you're comfortable working on the floor, and I have felt it on the floor, and I'll tell you that it's a lot harder on your body to felt on the floor. If you have a countertop, that's good. 
And if you don't, if you have four feet or if you have five feet, I can also show you, you know, you can lay out the project, you can wet the project, you can roll it up to some degree and then lay out the rest. I've done that with scarves that are like, they've started at maybe 110 inches long and there's my table length is like 81 or 82 inches. So you can lay out part of it, wet it, roll that up and then work on the rest. So if you can avoid working on the floor, I do encourage it because it is, it's honestly, it's really hard on the body. It just is. Yeah. Other questions? Rosanna asks, wants to confirm, do we really need six feet of mesh? Yeah, you don't have to. Okay, you don't have to. But the way I work is I like to cover my entire project with mesh on each side. Um, and I, I usually like to sandwich it, just depending on the project so you can flip it. But you can move it. If you don't have six feet of mesh, then you can wet, massage, and then move it. Wet and massage. Yeah, you don't have to. It's just how I like to work. And Kathy asks, is the scarf washable after finish without shrinking? No. It's not. It's not the scarf. So who asked? Kathy asked. Kathy Jensen said, is the scarf washable after finished without shrinking? And the answer to that would be no. This scarf, I will tell you, is probably, it's more than 10 years old. It has been handled a bunch and worn too. It's been handled and worn and displayed. It's very delicate, but you'll see that it's really not a mess. It's not coming apart. It's not pilled as, as you might expect, but it's a very soft, delicate felt. We're making something that is basically 100% wool, no, meaning no fabric, and it has a real nice drape to it. And in order to do that, we really need to soft felt it and not over felt it to the point that it's rigid. And so that means it's not 100% shrunk as much as it could be, or fold as much as it could be. If you throw it in the washing machine, it will shrink all kinds of ways that you may not expect. It would probably felt to itself to some degree, and it would pill for sure. So it's not something, it, you have to treat it like a delicate and hand wash it, rinse it, and just hang it to dry or lay it flat to dry. So you'll treat it like a nice sweater. You will. Mm -hmm. Janet asks, can you use a sander for the cobweb scarf? You certainly can. Um, you can use a sander if you like to. I won't be using a sander. I'm kind of low on power tools, meaning like I, you know, I don't, I don't reach for them very much. And this actually isn't going to be as challenging as you might think. But if you have difficulty rolling at all, then you could use something like a sander, or you could also use the palm washboard. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to roll, you can use a palm washboard. Someone says, Jackie Tyler says, can it be dry cleaned? Yes, if you tend to dry clean your wool or cashmere sweaters, then you can dry clean it. But because it's a scarf, you're probably not getting it all that dirty. You could probably just rinse it in a pail with a gentle wool wash uh, or fiber wash and um, rinse it and it'll be clean. Yeah, unless you're not dragging it through the, the dirt. <laughs> Do you need a noodle? Yes, um, yes, the noodles, the one thing I didn't mention, but a pool noodle would be very helpful. If you don't have a pool noodle, one, now's the time to get pool noodles, right? It's end of summer, grocery store has them, Target has them, get a couple. You know, you could felt with a friend, you can cut one really narrow and leave one wider. Um, if you don't have a pool noodle, you can do uh, uh, something like this. And that is take your, your bamboo mat, if you have one, and wrap it in the rubber grippy shelf liner. This makes a great core for rolling over. Um, and you can also wrap this stuff around like a rolling pin. And same with bubble wrap. So these are my, these are my makeshift uh, felting tools and they're fun to use. So work with what you got, you know. But a pull noodle is great for delicate items like this. Dollar Tree has them, perfect. Um, Jean says, wet felting machine to roll. Can you, uh, can you expand on that? It's just a statement, so I don't know what your question is. Uh, Devin McCarroll says, what are sanders used for? Devin, a sander um, is like an electric sander. Usually, some people might put, uh, I like to put my super bubble on the bottom or bubble wrap. And people use it instead of rolling. They use it for agitation. So remember when we're wet felting, we need to remove all the space between the fibers. 
we need to coax them together. So usually we use our soap and our water to help get all those layers laying together. And then we need agitation. That can come in the form of your hands, that can come in the form of rolling, that could come with the palm washboard, um, any other number of tools like the ones I showed you, or some people use sanders, especially for bigger projects, um, usually like dressmakers and clothing makers, but uh, lots of people are using them now, and it's just an agitator. You just need to be careful because most of them are electric and water electric. <laughs> Kimberly asks, for the makeshift rollers, do you wrap the whole bundle around the roller? Yeah, so Kimberly asked about my, my tools here. So I do both, like this one can be used this one can be used just as a core, if you will, and wrap your project around it. And this one can be used just to roll over something, just like you use the other rolling tools. Um, yeah, you can just roll this over your project by itself. You don't even have to roll the project. Or you could do the opposite. I mean, you could roll the project around it. Just to work the way you like to work. Everybody's going to be just a little bit different, and you know me by now. There's not one way. Innovate, have fun, makeshift, find what you like to do. But that I use these both ways. Someone says the washboard is her favorite. And you know what, Deborah? A lot of people use a washboard for hard folding stuff. And you may not need to go that hard with these scarves because they are going to be delicate. And if you're rubbing them, it depends on the kind of washboard. Maybe a glass washboard would be good, but a metal washboard might be a little too abrasive for something that's so soft felted. Mm -hmm. Hi Suzanne, welcome back. I saw you post today and I haven't even uh, commented on that or on many of the millions of amazing things y'all are posting in the group. It's just been so fun. Um, Janlyn says you can get the card polisher. The card polisher, she loves it. I've seen that. Some people are using like the round card polishers. So yeah, whatever y'all like to use, that's what we will do and I'll announce the date and I'll post the supply list. And Sue asks a fun question. She says, are you having any other special guests coming on a Wooly Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> well, ne last week I misspoke. So next week we have Kiyoshi Mino will be here in the studio with me. So I encourage you to bring your questions. He's going to bring some show and tell. Um, we don't have a lot queued up for the fall right now. But Kiyoshi will be here next week, and I'm super, super excited about that. As well, by the way, at least for three days, we're going to have lots of our BFFs from all over the country, and I think that's going to be super fun. So we'll try and get some video, and you can meet some of the other people in our community, because lots of people are traveling for this one, and we're really excited about it. Cool. Going back to the uh, Rock and Santa, <laughs> and he says, oh, I love him. What were the locks you used on his beard? Do you oh, uh, yeah, nope. These locks are a Lincoln lamb that we actually have in the shop right now. So who asked that question? Jenny. Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. So Jenny asked about Santa's locks. We have some Lincoln lamb locks in the shop right now. And, you know, these are so interesting. They remind me uh, even a bit of mohair. The like just to step down in the sheen, um, but they feel really silky like a nice mohair does. And, um, yeah, I know he needs some work, but I'm sort of, I get to this point where a project where I have to just kind of let him tell me what he wants. <laughs> Does he want a hat? Does he want more hair? I don't know. He's just a work in progress. But this is available in the shop now under our um, natural fibers. And I think Anne has a link to that already. Mm -hmm. Cool. And going back to the specialty designer packs, Kim asks, can you use the fibers in those packs for 2D and 3D needle felting? Oh, so Kim asked about the um, specialty designer pack, and she wants to know if you can needle felt with them. You know, you can needle felt with them, but they're very, very fine. So all the merino is 19 micron merino, and the silks and things like that, you'll need a real fine needle. And I would say, I wouldn't needle felt um, with them entirely like you could use them on a base that's already been felted and then needle felt them in but when you're working with such fine fibers you really want to sort of hone those techniques because there's no short fibers there's pretty much no kink left in the fibers 
they're all going the same direction. Um, so you kind of want to work with them in the way that you like to work. So lots of people do it. It's just not going to be as straightforward as working with MC1. And if you're not sure, start with something smaller. You know, just start with two ounces and see, you know, how you like working with it. Yeah. Do we want to do some wild cards? Uh, sure, you got something? Sure. Um, a couple of our Felton friends want to see uh, the contrasting whites in, in MC1. Oh. oh. Well, we only have one white in MC1. Okay, so Anne's going to go get some white so y'all can see. Um, she said that someone asked they want to see contrasting whites in MC1. MC1, we only have one white, and that's cotton white. But we do have CX2, which is winter white. And that's very bright, and it's different. Um, so we'll show those to you side by side. And I see some people are just now joining us. Um, and I'm trying to read some of your questions. So someone asked, what does MC1 mean? And just MC stands for Merino Cross. And we put a one on it because the, the, it was the first fiber we ever made. Um, we began making MC1 fiber, I think in 2011, based on really what I wanted. And that was a nice fiber that would wet felt or needle felt and uh, was a nice short crimpy fiber so it is mc1 is a living felt brand product made right here in the usa and it comes in about almost 90 colors what you got there ann they're not going to be able to see the difference between those yeah i know it's hard it's one thing in this in in this environment with these cameras and this lighting it's not easy to convey the difference between especially whites but i'm going to hold these up just a little bit of a distance um, because as we get closer they actually look closer together so here this is cx2 winter white it's a bright 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 white when people call and they want white for snowmen this is what we suggest this is cotton white uh, it is mc1 it is a uh, domestic fiber, it is crimpy, and this is a great white, especially on uh, animals, like a, a natural white on an animal or in a product project. And this one is very bright. It's shorter. Um, it can even be a little um, coarse and a little bit wiry. And it can also uh, like particulate a little bit. So if you have a real pristine environment, like black below you you'll want to take that into effect it is a little bit different so someone says they can see it they love the winter white they can see the difference great love the winter white so and the winter white in our uh oh this is natural white well natural white is currently very bright very even close to natural white and lily can get close together in the merino top did you bring lily I did. um right now um where you just give me lily in merino top, thank you, lily white is more akin to winter white. So let me hold these together. I am holding uh, lily white. This is lily white on top of CX2. And this is our natural white, which we call, uh, this says natural white. Oh, yep, that one's New Zealand. Quartet. I was going to say, we don't, have, <laughs> we don't have natural. We do have natural, but we don't call it natural. So this is New Zealand Corydell White. So you see, they're all really close together. And something I do want to mention, you know, when you see stuff photographed online, it usually looks whiter than it would in person. It just does. The camera captures it, makes it look a lot whiter. Okay. Ah, oh, Luna, hello from Italy. That's so nice. Um... Uh, Kimberly Pulley says cotton white is warm and CX2 is cool and I definitely think that is that is accurate it definitely is it definitely is okay Sandy from the Bronx that's so fun Heather says I just received my Tessa silk goodie bag it will be perfect for doll hair and such a nice variety of colors too you mentioned viscose when will it be in the shop Heather uh, viscose we're gonna get it online probably next week so we have a nice little range of viscose ready. I think we're gonna sell it in two, two ounce increments, or we said one, one ounce, one ounce increments. And we have, we're gonna open that section up, should be next week, and we'll make an announcement. And we have like a really nice range for you. I think you'll like it. Viscose, some people are gonna ask, is more akin to bamboo than Tessa Silk. 
bamboo and viscose are both like highly processed fibers whereas tessa silk is more on the natural range um, and that's what makes them them a little less expensive i guess because they're more considered a man-made fiber even though they're from a natural product origin <laughs> initially cool well, hey, I told y'all that we have a green theme going on and I have a show and tell for you, but I'm going to have Anne talk you through the greens in our MC1 line um, because we always need lots in winter and fall, don't we, Anne? Yes. <laughs> Yay, Anne! <laughs> All right, we've got our greens today in the MC1. I'm going to start with this one right here. This one is parakeet. This is jelly bean, key lime, leaf, meadow, fern, bamboo, buttermint, shire. I can't believe I blinked on the shire <laughs> for a second one. Oh my goodness. True olive, sage. Back. Nope, that one is lemongrass. <laughs> lemongrass, our new evergreen, bluegrass, wintergreen, bonsai, and spruce. Roseanne Kathleen Little says, you could make the Emerald City. <laughs> Jennifer Sunjum says, oh, felted apples, making some felted apple soaps. Love Ooh. those colors. Mm -hmm. And then Cindy Bennett says, I need to order more greens. Glad I just remembered Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> Perfect timing. Joanne, of course, says, love honeydew. Where is it at? <laughs> honeydew is one of our heathered greens. It is very, very similar to parakeet. Mm -hmm. It's just, what, maybe half a shade lighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, so it's, it's pretty, it's close. Very Are we close. out right now or we have some? We are out. Oh, yeah. So we have some. I mean, we don't have any. Love the evergreen. He's, that's what Benita Joe Graham. Oh, yeah. Sarah says, Sarah Murphy says, my, he, my son bought me the green pack for my birthday. I love them. Oh, that's sweet. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Uh -huh. Pam says, difficult to see online which green is best for poppy leaves. What would Ooh. you choose for poppy leaves? You know what? I would say post a picture to the group. Uh, to the group Living Felt Friends of the poppies you'd like to make and let the group chime in. But you can always make a blend. Ooh. Don't you think like maybe spruce and evergreen together would make a nice blend for a rich dark. I don't know how dark poppy leaves are. But hey, I just saw Rachel Carter jump in and she posted an amazing poppy mosaic just before Ooh. in the group, just before we got on here. Um, Cindy Parker says, I should have waited to order my green today. After you showed it, I can tell the difference now. Did we already ship her order? Cindy Parker? We don't know. Uh, possibly. Cindy, if we didn't ship your order, then um, you can change it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Everyone really likes it, Anne. Thank you awesome. so much for that. Absolutely. Cool. I'm going to drop this down. We didn't need it. So that was fun. We've been taking you on a little tour of our MC1 batting. So we kicked it off with earth tone, hot tones. I think we did then earth tones. And now the greens. And now you can see the monochromes. It's not all them together, but you got to see them this time. Super fun. Yeah, everyone really liked it. Nice. Um, and so, hey, on our green theme, and this will give us a chance to talk about our upcoming project, uh, let me see a round of hearts for everyone who is planning to participate in the Felt United group art project where we are wet felting a textural piece for a group, uh, a group art piece that we're going to basically put all of our pieces together and make group wall art. Oh good, so I'm seeing lots of hearts for that. So we received our very first one today. And this one is from Joanne Stratikos of Mudworks Pottery and Woolworks in Pennsylvania. Um, Y'all know Joanne, you see her in the group. She makes the gnomes and she makes the um, sheep and the pin cushions and our living felt mugs, of course. 
and this is what she made it feels it's really well felted i want to tell you it's a uniform thickness it's like felted to the max um, these are raised little spirals and you can tell she did uh, resists in here and all we're really looking for are texture so this is um, not curated you're welcome to send us whatever you like and just remember that we it should be wet felted or needle felted you can have other design elements stitching beading whatever you want on there but it should mostly be felted um, and it should be textured in whatever way so remember our theme this year is explore expand stretch i hope that you'll take an opportunity with this piece to maybe try something new and different expand your skills you know expand your adventurism and we're going to put all these together and then she did fix to the back her postcard this is totally acceptable we just want your name and information attached to the back of the piece already if you will and remember that the dimensions are a maximum of 16 inches on one side and a minimum of four inches on any one side so it could be um you know four by eight eight six by twelve whatever just maximum of 16 and minimum by four what do we got on that Kimberly Pulley says, awesome, Joanne Stratagos. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deadline again? So the deadline is September 15th, ideally for us to receive your piece. So please send it by September 1st. And that gives you like a, almost a month if you're in the United States um, to mail it to us. Canada might take a few weeks, two to three weeks. And some people who are further away have already sent theirs. Um, so the deadline for us to receive it ideally is September 15th. We will be doing a showing on October 3rd of all the work together. And if it comes in after that, we'll still add it to the piece. It just won't be part of that original live show. Felt United is the first Saturday of every year. Uh, there is a Facebook group called We Felt United, and all this information is in the official announcement in our group, Living Felt Friends. There's a big image, it's right at the top, and then outside the image we have all the additional details as well. So if you log into the group, you can see it. Um, a couple of our felting friends are loving the squareness of Joanne's <laughs> piece, and I wonder if you have any tips for It's her. cut, y'all. She cut this square. So this has been felted and then cut square. You can see that the edges are cut. If I, if I hold it up, it looks like she might have finished the edges, you know, to some degree. But if I hold this up, you can see that it's cut. So it's okay to cut your piece. It is. <laughs> you can cut it. She's a oh, I cut it. Yeah, she cut it. Uh, Roseanne asked, can this be three dimensional? You know what? It can have relief but we're making like wall art so it needs to be able to be attached to that we're not looking for like a standalone sculpture it needs to be something that can be incorporated into the wall art so if you want to make something that has lots of baubles and protrusions that's totally fine just give us something that we can you know mount it with all the rest because we want the we want it to have sides so we can look at kind of piecing it together like a mosaic at least that's my big wish. <laughs> Who knows? We don't know, you know, what all's gonna come in the door. It's all gonna be magical and we'll just find a way that it all goes together. We're just gonna trust that we'll be guided <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Elsa says Elsa says, now I feel much better <laughs> knowing that it's cut. Yeah, so you don't have to master the edges. <laughs> cool. Oh, Frazier said that she sent her piece to us and Kimberly's sending hers to mom. Oh, that's so exciting. Cool. I really can't wait to see what y'all all send send forward. Good. Let's see a round of hearts of everybody. I missed it. Who's all planning to send us a piece just so I can see? Or maybe say me. I'm in or something like that so we know your piece is coming. Els Fiber says, must it be one specific color? Els, if you're not in the group, you know what I'll do is I'll repost... Um, the project here on this page later today. What we're looking for are pieces that are either all in one color family or one color family with a pop of a single other color. So this is a great example. She chose the green family and your piece could just be all greens or all hot tones or all monochrome, you know, blacks and grays. Um, 
or you can do that color family and not you know maybe not spread the range too far and just pop in one color from another color family we just figure that will help us kind of find a way to join all the pieces it, uh, somehow by bringing the color families together so that's the basic idea Kimberly says Marie you already saw it oh yeah that's fun me 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 great um, good yeah I hope y'all will par participate just for the fun of it and then we'll have a little piece of you here blessing the halls and blessing everyone that comes in and of course we'll share it on felt united also and Kathy asked what will be done with the large finish mosaic Kathy it's going to be here in living felt for all of our friends to see when they come and visit so we're going to use it as a permanent installation of art here in living felt and in our new space when we move to so we would really like to um, so much of our decoration are either things we made or gifts from friends and so as you walk around the shop you see so many things that people in our community have created um, and so what we'd really like felt united is a way to bring us all together and that's why we're asking one for small pieces um, as part of this contribution but that's the plan is that uh, it will become a permanent installation here Mm-hmm good we you know earlier this year we talked about doing um, like a, a friendship quilt or something where everyone was going to felt a little piece and so when the felt united theme was announced uh, this just seemed like the perfect way to bring that idea uh, together with the felt united theme for this year so that's how we came up with that uh, Elsa says yay it's a hall of fame <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and we're gonna we want to find a way that we can map so that as visitors are looking at it they'll know who made what we'll figure that out but if you would you know just remember to like somehow affix your name and complete information to the back you can pin it you can sew it I think this is glued <laughs> whatever you can do so that it's permanently attached and that way we'll have it all together all together okay very cool are there any requests any final thing um, that anyone wants to see this week any wild cards or requests for something you want to see in the shop maria asks could we one woolly wednesday go on a trip in the shop <laughs> <laughs> you know we could i don't know how we would do that i think we'd be through the shop for at least for me so fast i can't wait next year when we move that'll be you know a lot more adventurous we're going to move somewhere here in austin to a bigger space um okay a video tour of the shop <laughs> would be yes. amazing <laughs> okay we will try and find a way to do that we'll think about how that might be maybe one once we're decorated for fall or something that'd be a fun a fun time to do it okay yeah so we'll we'll um, more pumpkin wool Darlene says <laughs> okay we will do that we will take a little video tour of the shop and you know what else I want to ask you all is we're looking at our workshops for next year of course we want to do more felt alongs and I'm so glad that y'all have interest in that we've had such a wonderful slate of workshops this year Still to come, as you know, Kiyoshi Mino is actually going to be here twice. He's here this month and then back in October to do a realistic deer. Joyce Hazelrig is going to be doing dragons with us in September. And then after that, we keep it a little more low key because we're so busy shipping all of your orders out. So in November, we'll have a make and take. In December, we often have an ornament party. Did we do that last year? We did. We had an ornament party? No. We did last year, not the year before. Oh, we did have an ornament party. We did. Oh, fun. So, so we'll do those kinds of things. And actually, uh, later this fall, actually, we have a couple of community service things we're going to do. So I'm going to let Ann tell you about that. But um, what I want to know is, what would get you to Austin? Like, I want your dream workshop. Like, this would get me there. I just. Just type it right here. We don't have to do a formal poll. We did it at the beginning of the year with your bucket list. I'd like to know, like, if this workshop were on the slate, you would be trying to figure out how to get here. And I'm gonna assume that most of those are two to three day workshops. If it's like two, what looks like two single day workshops, just put those down. I really wanna know how we can be of service to you and what you're interested in learning. And while you are um, can't y'all relocate to Washington? I told my husband I want like a bus. Every time I see like a really cool rig, I'm like, we need one of those. And we could go on the road with the show and like. <laughs> 
felt in your studio, wouldn't that be fun? Even if that's your kitchen, that would be fine. <laughs> Money would get me there, Sue says. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so y'all think about that. And you know what I'm going to do is just have Ann tell you uh, what we're going to be doing in August and September because she's been our champion for organizing that. Uh, we have a couple of community service days coming up, and Ann's going to tell you what we're doing. Yay, Ann! Yay. <laughs> We are so excited to have the opportunity to do more with our community this year. Uh, the first one that we've got coming up is actually at the end of this month, and it's going to be August 22nd, which is a Wednesday. <laughs> so our, our schedule is going to be a little bit different for Wooly Wednesday that day. We are going to be going to a branch of the Austin Public Library, and we're going to be getting to wet felt some bookmarks with some kids. <laughs> so that is going to be a lot of fun. We hope to be able to maybe do a, a little live video and, and just let you guys in on that. Um, the next one is going to be Monday, September 24th at the uh, Austin Central Library. And we are going to be needle felting some pumpkins. And um, yeah, if you're in the Austin area and looking for something to do, you definitely have to come. It's going to be so much fun. There, it, it sounds like a lot of people <laughs> could be there. So we're, we're really happy that this year we get to, to spend some more time in our community and, and to, to bring felting out into the world. You're just getting a whole stream of hearts. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yes, and thank you for organizing that, oh. Anne. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So these are going to be volunteer hours. The fairies want to go, and I want to go. So the first one will be on a Wooly Wednesday, and that's the end of the month this month. So probably what we'll do is we'll have a little impromptu uh, Wooly Wednesday there at the library if they have a good reception. We're going to test that out when we go tomorrow and see if we have a good feed. Then we'll just do a sort of a little low-key Wooly Wednesday and say hi to you all. And then the end of September is a Monday night, so I promise you these girls are going to be tired <laughs> and then out there needle felting pumpkins till Lord knows how late. Yeah. <laughs> But we just want to do it, and it's just one way we can kind of give back, and that's get out. We're going to, like, an area, one area that doesn't get a lot of service, yeah. right? You know, they really don't have a lot of opportunities, and it's just so cool that the library puts resources towards it. So, of course, it's free for everybody, and maybe that's an opportunity for you, too. If you're looking to teach or get out and share, you might call your local library and see, do they have, one of them is called the Crafternoon, right? It's called right? Crafternoon. Yeah. What's the other one called? Night Crafters. Night Crafters <laughs> and Crafternoon. And you know, maybe there's an opportunity in your town too to do a little volunteer like that too. So thank you, Ann, for coordinating. Absolutely. We're excited about that. Yeah, so we'll share pictures with you all too. Okay. So I am just excited to read back later and see all of your ideas and all the things you posted that you want to learn. I know some people are looking for cheap flights. I saw that. I saw Gladys Paulus and Maria Fries, both of whom we've been in contact with. Gladys Paulus, um, maybe likely, I think we just need more space. And so for those of you, especially if you're new to us, um, we do a lot of volume in a little tiny space and that's part to just hiring people that are pure magic these the fairies that we have they just work in what have become cramped conditions we've been in our space since 2011 it's the first commercial space we've ever been in and we've grown leaps and bounds thanks to all of you loving the same thing that we love and that's this beautiful creative share sharing community constantly inspiring each other so next year we are moving and we don't know where yet but we need more space for the classroom and so doing the bigger wearables um, any kind of wearables really anything that involves like somebody having two tables or leading a lot of needing a lot of space we need more space for that classroom and so that's the only thing that's keeping us from having some of those bigger events this year we did a Nenofelt uh, wearables retreat and so we had to spend a considerable amount to um, have an event space and lodging and so just so you know I want you to know we're really working on that and your suggestions are always heard and received and most of your wishes are my wishes too <laughs> so I promise we're going to just do everything we can to bring you more 
uh, live felt alongs, demonstrations. The felt alongs are, have, are proving to be my favorite, to have you all there while we're felting. I'm really enjoying that, as opposed to just recording a video and then posting it. It's a lot more fun to have you there and asking questions. And um, then, as far as the classes, I promise to read uh, what all of you have to say. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I know some of you feel like you have something to teach, to offer. Um, some of you have already contacted me. Just private message me. That's the best thing to do. If you think that if you are a workshop teacher or a fiber art teacher and you want to offer a workshop, just private message me um, so we can have that conversation offline. That's perfect. Cool. Well, I think that's about all we have for this hour. So, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get all the fairies back in here and we're going to give away some prizes. And thank you all so much for sharing this hour with us, for sharing your ideas, for sharing a few laughs, and for all of your suggestions. I promise that we're going to get right back on uh, the next round of Fairy Tale Pumpkin. And I'm sorry it's already sold out, but we kind of knew that would happen. And we can only make so much at a time. If uh, some of y'all saw the video, it's a pretty slow process to make. So the fairies are back and we're going to give away some presents. Come on in. <laughs> okay, cool. So we're picking three prizes. So we're picking three names and giving away three prizes today. That's yes. what we're doing, right? Okay. Nice. Okay. Who's going to draw first? Go first. Mix it up. <laughs> Sorry. First winner is... Heart, heart, heart. Janine McLeod Lang. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. What she win him? She won a cobweb scarf kit. Yay! <laughs> so this one is in Woodland. Um, we have a couple color choices. So just email customer service at livingfelt.com with your choice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Congratulations, Congratulations Janine. <laughs> Read it loud. Read it loud. Okay. Janet T. L. Jones. Yay! Yay! Janet! Janet, you won one of our MC1 studio packs. <laughs> so this is the, the one, the greens pack. Again, just email your color choice to customer service at livingfelt.com. Yeah, we have like nine or ten different MC1 packs, so you can just choose any one of those packs of six when you see the little pyramids when you get to the page. Any of those, just email customer service. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Howell. Yay, Sandra! Sandra, you won one of our specialty designer goodie packs. Yay! Super fun. So if you like wet felting, this would be a great pack. Or if you just want to explore, we have lots of, I don't know, like nine or so of those you can choose from. So just pick any of those color families. And if that just isn't the prize you want, you can choose one of the other two prizes, Sandra. <laughs> cool. All right, y'all, so we'll see you next time with Kiyoshi. <laughs> Bye. 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 Be extra good to yourselves this week, you guys. Remember to explore, expand, stretch, but mostly just take care of you. Thank you.